We are so glad that you joined us today. God wants to do so much for you and through you, and we want to hear about it. So take a moment to share your story with us at mystory@lbtlima.org. If you would also like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do so at limabaptisttemple.org. Or you can download our church app available for iPhone and Android users. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's message.
Church, Jesus is alive. He's no longer in the grave. He is risen, conquering sin and death. Come on, church, let's stand and let's sing about the greatest day in history. Greatest day in history. Death is beat and you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is
Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoices as though heaven had lost. you guys want to join us for the second service too. We're just going to have church all morning long. So please come join us for the second service. We'd love to have you worship with us. Um, let's just pray together. Father, we come before you, Lord, and we're just so excited, so excited for this day. We have reason to celebrate. As Christians, Father, we celebrate your death, burial, and resurrection, Father, that you conquered sin and death. Lord, um, thank you so much for the free gift of salvation. Thank you for the cross, Father. Thank you so much, Father. We, we don't know how to say thank you, but even in this moment, Lord, God, would you just uh, come and speak to us, Father, in a mighty way, Lord. We want to be led by your spirit, whatever you're calling us to do, Father. We want to be open to that. Lord, thank you so much. Let's just sing this out as a prayer today. Amen. The sorrows Lamb of God by His own betrayed. The sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus' name. 
This is the story of the gospel. Silent as he stood accused, meet in my
Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's alive. Woo. You may be seated this morning. I can see Jesus high and exalted. My eyes are fixed upon his face. It shines like the sun. I can see Jesus clothed in glory. He is high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple.
Feel like you've been to church today? Amen? Amen. Turn the lights on up there in the balcony, if you would, and underneath, please. If you have your Bibles, you can open to uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6. He is alive, amen? amen? And because he's alive, and I've asked him into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior, I have nothing to worry about. You know why? I have hope. I have hope in today, I have hope in tomorrow, I have hope in every day to come. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And do you know that life is just worth the living because he lives? Amen? So maybe you're here today and maybe you feel like you're in a hopeless situation. Well, I got some good news. God doesn't know what a hopeless situation is. And what we want to talk about today is... When hope came to life. You know that, if we'd be honest, we have more confidence in what the devil can do to us more than what God can do for us. For example, some of us, many of us, some recently, some not so recently, but as always, we go to a doctor and we get a bad test result. Or we get, have a bad meeting maybe with our employer and we get laid off. Maybe we even get fired. But no matter what it is, it seems like our mind starts dwelling on the worst case scenario, if we'll be honest. And I think we all can agree to that. Now I want to read this scripture here in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. And I've got several I'm going to read, but... For those of you who are members here, you know I use a lot of scripture and you can probably just keep up better by on the screen. It says, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. Do you know that a person's word today can seldom be his bond. Do you know that lying is almost the norm today? You know, when you turn on, you know, the news today, especially if you watch Fox or CNN or whatever you may choose to watch, but it's always about who's lying, trying to figure out who's lied, who's lying now. It's like that's the way the world is that we live in today. It's not so much, though, when I think about us having feel like we're in hopeless situations. And I know some of you come in here today and you're struggling with some things. And, you know, we have hospitals full of people and some are struggling with different things. I've been there this week. I've talked to them. Uh, you know, whether it's mental, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritually, whether it's emotionally, whether it's financially. I mean, all of us at one time or another can fall and have fallen probably into those situations. But, you know, as hopeless as that seems sometimes, you know, it's not so much the fierceness of the battle, but the duration of it. Some of you in here, especially, I don't want to call names because you know who you are, but have had horrible things to deal with physically. And it just seems like that battle will never, never end. Sometimes it's easy to think that God doesn't hear your prayers. Maybe God doesn't really care. But you understand everything. He has to... Get permission. He allows this to happen in your life. That all things can work together for the good. For them who love the Lord. And who are called according to his purpose. Where do you get your hope? Now let's get something straight from the onset. Outside of Christ, there is no hope. My hope is built, say it with me, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that today? Listen, outside the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is no hope inside this place today. But it's because of this hope and his love that Jesus humbly entered that road, the Palm Sunday road, riding on a donkey when he was going there in Jerusalem. 
when he was about to be betrayed and crucified. As many of you know, we had a group that just got back from Israel eight or nine days ago. And uh, we were honored to have walked that Palm Sunday road. And right here is just a, two or three pics of that road. We are at the uh, pictures are from the Mount of Olives. And here us uh, walking this road. That's our group there. Go ahead to the next one. And there's that Palm Sunday road that Jesus rode in on that donkey. And the next one. Now listen. Jesus later with his battered, broken, bruised, bloody body walked the Via Dolorosa road. Which we also walked that road. Show those pictures. Three there. Now you're talking about a moving experience. To get back and uh, somebody was concerned that I was going to do a funny title because it's April Fool's. You know, if I, would, if I told some people today that Jesus never died and Jesus, or Jesus never rose from the dead, that's not April Fool's to them. That's what they believe. Can you imagine being in here today having no hope? Can you imagine that? But because of the resurrection in the empty tomb, we have that hope today. What a moving experience. We can all have hope in Jesus Christ. But there are so many people today who are not really living. They are just simply existing. What about you? Where do you really get your hope? Because people try to get hope in a lot of things. Been there, done that before. Are you really living or are you just existing? In the book of Proverbs, it says no one can live with a broken spirit. And I say that's true. We all have unhealthy areas in our lives, don't we? I mean, we have habits, we have hurts, we have hang-ups, and God only knows what else. And it is these things that really mess us up. Now this morning, what I want to do, I want to touch on five quick biblical steps for cultivating hope, and then I want to talk about the resurrection a little bit. First of all, you must remember God is with you. You understand those who forget God have no hope. Those who forget God have no hope. If people condition their body just right, they can live 11 days without water, 8 days without food, 3 minutes without oxygen, but not 1 second without hope. See the difference? Not 1 second without hope. Listen to this verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. You see, man has forgotten God today. There are so many people today that can't even remember what Jesus did in their lives, but they call themselves a believer in Jesus. You know, a definition of an atheist is someone who is living as if there is no God. Well, do you know, I know a lot of Christians who live like that. Let's just be honest. You know, we do our thing. We come in on Sundays, and God only knows how we live Monday through Saturday. But we come, and it's like we just check that off. That is the right thing to do. We've done it. Listen, when we understand what we have heard and seen already this morning, when we understand that every day we should be celebrating the resurrection, and we should remember who God is and what he has done for us when we ask him in our heart as our Lord and Savior. Nobody should have to get us excited to try to get excited about Jesus. Amen? Listen, the Bible says in Psalms 94, 19, When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. You may say, well, my prayers don't really get above the ceiling. They don't even get out of the room. Well, you don't have to worry about it because God's in the very room you're praying in. You need to understand that. He does it. Listen, you have to remember God is with you. Secondly, you must remember that God cares for you. He doesn't just tolerate us. He cares for us. I mean, be honest. Those of you who are married, don't we just tolerate each other sometimes? Huh? Your children? And your children tolerate you? Amen? Is anybody going to agree with me? Amen? I could just ask some of your kids. Listen, but we must remember that God cares for us. He doesn't just tolerate us. He cares for us. You know why? Because he loves us unconditionally. Okay, listen to this in Lamentations. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. 
His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You see, I have hope when I think of this. I mean, every day, people, every morning. That's why it's not that hard sometimes. You know, this is the day the Lord has made. I re will rejoice. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. But look at Romans 5, 8, a very verse that a lot of people have known, know by heart. But God shows his love for us in that while we, what? We're still sinners. We're still sinning. Christ died for us. Not only must you remember God is with you and that God cares for you, but thirdly, you must remember that God knows your situation. He is fully aware of what's going on in your life. Amen? Listen to this in Psalms. You know how troubled I am. You have kept a record of my tears. Isn't that an awesome verse? He knows what you're going through. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Remember that verse? Listen, Goliath was probably the best thing that ever happened to David. The verse says, I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have known the distress of my soul. You see, God does some of his greatest work in hopeless situations. Now understand that David had already seen God deliver him from the paw of the bear, paw of the lion, and it was no big deal. David just picked up the sling, the stones, and hit him. But it was the best thing that ever happened to David. Maybe he thought he was in a hopeless situation. I don't think he did. His brothers did. They would never go down and fight. But listen, I said earlier, God doesn't know what a hopeless situation is. So you must remember God knows your situation. Fourth, you must remember God has power you don't have. See, that is what makes us hopeful. Luke 18, 27. But he said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. You see, there's a universal principle of man-driven machines like coffee pots, toasters, right? Microwave ovens. Y'all know what I'm talking about? But you have to plug them in. You have to have a power source for these things to operate. It's the same thing in our life. People, we have got to be able to communicate with God to be able to get the power. Because God's power is unlimited. He never gets tired or fatigued, does he? He never, never runs out of energy. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. He decided not to live on the basis of what he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. Listen. So maybe you feel like your situation is hopeless today. Look at this next verse. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for not your good pleasure, for his good pleasure. If God, listen, God will give you the will. That's the desire from God. God will give you the strength to complete what he gives you the desire to do. God has power you don't have. Then last, you must remember God has promised to help you. In other words, not to abandon you. I expect your help because you have promised. That's what it says in the book of Psalms. Now, do you know there are over 6,000 promises in Scripture? And Jesus hasn't recalled one single promise. Aren't you thankful? Over 6,000 promises. You must earnestly believe that you matter to him. He has power to help you, to save you, to change you, to deliver you, to sustain you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. When we receive Christ, this is what everybody needs to understand. We receive the whole package. We received it all. You don't have to go around the corners looking for other things. But the more you <clears throat> get in touch with God, the more you read his word, the more you eat that word. You meditate on that word. And the more you pray is the deeper you're going to grow in your faith. In other words, when I say you receive Christ, you get the whole package. 
Someone said, give me the fingers of Mozart and there is no musical piece I cannot play. Give me the mind of Einstein. There's no math formula I cannot solve. The arms of Hank Aaron. There's no ball I cannot hit. But give me the life of Jesus Christ and there is no victory that I cannot achieve. Listen, if you're a believer of Jesus today, maybe, maybe you have lost faith, which means you've lost hope. Maybe all you have is a, a crazy hunch and a high hope. You have nothing to give, but you are hurting. And all you have to offer him is your hurt. But if you even have a small ounce of conviction this morning that God can and a hope that he will take care of you, that is faith enough. I want you to think back again to the time when you really, really believed in God. And you really believed that he could help you, and he did. Let that help you. You know why? Because God is faithful. Look at 1 Peter 1, 3. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is why we have hope. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now think about that for a minute. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Watch this clip. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guard trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Well, we're here at the garden tomb today. And this may have been the very spot most people think it is. But no matter if it's 300 meters or 500 meters, I have some good news today. The tomb is still empty. Man, the hope that we have in Jesus because of the empty tomb. Jesus is our living hope. If you're here today and you're feeling hopeless, please know that you have hope today because He is risen. Wow. By the way, it is still empty. Amen? Amen? That's amazing when you're there. You just, you know, you know, I, and I love the graphic here. You see that stone? <clears throat> you think Jesus did that or you think somebody just came in and, you know, stole him? Huh? Jesus. Jesus is alive today. Amen. And we <clears throat> need to act like it. We need to live like it. Doesn't everything rest upon that living hope? That resurrection, doesn't it? Doesn't it? If there was no resurrection, we would have no hope at all. If there was no resurrection, much less the living hope that is Jesus Christ. If he were still in the grave, where would our hope be? We would be hopeless. But Jesus, when God the Father brought him forth, that cold, listen, now that cold, dark tomb, in that very moment, he gave all of us willing to accept it, the living hope. And we must strive to understand the depth and the breadth of that hope. Think about it. God the Father, in his infinite love for each and every one of us, brought Christ to life from the grave so that we could have that intimate, personal, daily, life-sustaining relationship that is desired for us from the beginning of time. That is is a love that deserves our dedication, our service, and our time. But therein also lies the trap. 
because it's in our human nature to try to earn, to merit that hope through our dedication, our service, and our time. But instead, we accept this hope for the true and unmerited gift it is. Then we, in return, we can just take that love on through our dedication, our service, and our time as an act of true worship, praise, adoration, or we could just say true religion. He is the ultimate in sacrifice, the ultimate gift of hope for all of us. Not just for the day to you know the day-to-day -day grind of life, but for our hope for today, tomorrow, for our future, our eternity spent in the glory of the one who loved us first, who formed us in our mother's womb, who cared enough to prepare a way for us to restore this relationship he designed for us. So listen to this verse again. Jeremiah 29, 11. It's one of mine and Lori's life verses. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The very one who set the galaxies in motion is the same God who has plans for your future. What plans? Say it. Plans to give you a hope and a future. But here's the thing. It's up to you to accept the plans. These plans that God has for you. It always is. Because he is a gentleman. He's not going to kick the door down to your heart. The living hope of the resurrection is our hope of every day. And not only that, every minute. That's the true miracle of the resurrection that we celebrate today. You see, the living hope walks through every situation, every event, in every moment of our life, both good and bad. And he is the one who died for you on Calvary. His love is infinite and his holiness is magnificent. You see, he deserves your all. There's two types of people here today. You may be the person that's been in church your whole life, never really had a rebellious period in your life, pretty much lived your entire life for Christ. Or you may be the person and has a life that's been riddled with pain, with sorrow, with trouble, scars of shame, and lasting effects of bad decisions. Do you realize, can you comprehend today that Jesus loves you regardless of your situation? He died for both of you. Do you hear me? He loves you just the same. It is because of that love, the desire, that desire to have an intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus. That's what I'm trying to tell you, people. Listen to me. Jesus freely walked that road, the Via Dolorosa road, carrying his cross. Listen, it wasn't the nails that held Jesus to the cross, but it's because of who he saw. He saw you and he saw me, and that's what kept him on the cross, his love for us. Our Good Friday services, if you were here, they sang a song, and it said, I see my name written in his wounds. Can you imagine? But that's my question to you today. Is your name written in his wounds? Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life this morning? You see, I think sometimes we get so caught up in the day-to-day -day that we forget that earth is, in fact, our final destination. God the Father has made a place, no, a home for us, a place where there's no more night, just glorious light at the feet of the one who loves us. Now, it's true, we must stay here on planet Earth and just kind of move through this life to which Jesus had called us to, okay? He brings us until he brings us home or returns for his people. But it's that hope, hope for every day, hope for what waits for us after this life. That should be our catalyst for our, this world. You see, he's already provided through the cross what you need to be the very best you can be for the glory of the Lord, the glory of Jesus, the Christ. The Bible uses the word hope 159 times in the NIV. 
You know what the hope is? That hope is Jesus. He's here for you. He's here for me 24-7. So the question is, what will you do today with Jesus? Would you bow your heads with me? We take time to have an invitation. and I would pray that you wouldn't be in a big hurry to get out the door, but that you would do business with the Lord this morning. Father, my prayer today is that those who are here today, first of all, that have no hope of eternity, spending it with you, Lord, if they don't know you as Lord and Savior, that, Lord, they would understand that today is the day of salvation. And what a greater day that could they ever be saved than Resurrection Sunday. So, God, I would pray that they would ask you in their heart as their Lord and Savior today. Lord, for others who just come in, Lord, and they have just felt hopeless. Lord, they just feel like, Lord, there's been no hope in their life. God, uh, some are waiting still test results and, Lord, other things. But, God, I pray today that you would let them know again that you don't even know what a hopeless situation is. Lord, I pray that they would understand that you have a purpose and you have a plan for their life. And, Father, as we <clears throat> open up the altar today, that, God, people would come and they would just pour out their hearts to you. And, Lord, would you restore the hope to them today? I ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Would you stand and would you come today as God instructs? glad that you joined us today. God wants to do so much for you and through you, and we want to hear about it. So take a moment to share your story with us at mystory@lbtlima.org. If you would also like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do so at limabaptisttemple.org, or you can download our church app available for iPhone and Android users. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's message.